So which sounds better? The original Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless or the Gen 2s? I'm here to set the record straight. Let's get into it. What's shaking? It's Audio Bacon. If you're new to this channel, I cover all things hi-fi, so if you're picky about sound quality, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell. So some reviewers are saying the second gen Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless sounds exactly the same as the first one. Others say Sennheiser went a little bit backwards with the sound quality. There seems to be a lot of mixed opinions. Sennheiser seems to have two year cycle for these wireless buds, so the gen 2 should be relevant for at least another year. So I got some heat for crapping on the original Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless earbuds. I gotta keep it real, man. For a premium audiophile True Wireless earbud, they didn't sound great, but I could hear why a casual listener would actually disagree with that. More on that in a little bit. Also, many reviewers were creaming their pants claiming they were the absolute best selling true wireless earbuds on the market and people were just hopping on the bandwagon. I'll also have a sound demo so you can judge for yourself, so stick around. Regarding the first gen Momentum True Wireless earbuds, personally I just felt like they were just better and cheaper options. So just because a popular brand throws a premium price tag on a product doesn't mean it'll sound good. Not to mention, the original Momentum True Wireless Buds also had a ton of quality issues with charging and syncing, the left bud going out, and other things. I did end up buying the Momentum True Wireless 2s last year, but didn't have a chance to listen to them until a few weeks ago. And that actually worked out because Sennheiser recently included a new feature in their latest firmware update, and it's a game changer. Let me show you. This feature is called high-end sound tuning and this is the Sennheiser smart control app. You can just get to it through this gear uh, icon there. So I have it enabled here. At first, I thought it was just one of those gimmicky settings that have no real improvement, but I was wrong. And I'll get into the sound in a bit, but keep in mind when you do have this mode enabled, it does use more power. Sennheiser mentioned this feature was a DSP adjustment that is tuned for audio files and is only available for the Gen 2s. And I guess they knew the first gens weren't meant for the hi-fi enthusiasts. Big surprise, guys. I feel high-end sound tuning mode is absolutely named because it basically enables beast mode and completely changes the performance profile of these earbuds. It's perfect for critical listeners and those who want to appreciate their music at a deeper level. This mode also brings the signature much closer to what I expected from Sennheiser's other headphones, which makes me think that Sennheiser probably intentionally or accidentally tuned the original Momentum True Wireless for the mainstream listeners. And the beauty of this is that you can use these on your PC and other devices that don't have the smart control app and the high-end tuning will still be enabled. So in addition to the high-end sound tuning, you can actually still EQ the sound and through the equalizer in the app. This is my tuning. Uh, I just bumped up the, the low end a little bit to get more of that rumble, a little bit more dense, a uh, denser sound, and the mids a little bit to give it a little bit more fill. You can adjust as you like, but I wouldn't change these too much because you'll get a really weird bulgy sound or hollow sound, but it's an option if you want. Uh, I would just skip this mode. I have no clue how to use this. It takes quite a bit of intuition. They had this in the, the original one as well, but this is a lot easier to control. So what are the improvements with high-end sound tuning mode turned on? You'll get smoother upper mids, better timbre, better oral shaping, so singers will have more dimension to them, and cleaner highs. It's a little lighter on the bass, but it's still punchier than most of the ones I've heard, including the Power Beats Pro. I would consider myself a little bit of a bass head and I, I found them more than sufficient. You'll also notice a blacker background and much better imaging. And what that means is that each performer has a natural sense of personal space as they're performing. They're not clumped together. So bass definition is also vastly improved. It's not muddy, bloated, or tubby. and has slam and impact better than nearly every True Wireless earbud I've heard so far. Texture and tonal balance is also at another level. And the hashiness in the upper mids when you don't have this turned on, you still get a little bit of sibilance, but it's a lot less distracting. All right, so before I get into the comparison, earlier I mentioned a casual mainstream listener versus an audiophile. Which Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless you pick might be determined by which camp you belong to. To me, a mainstream listener is someone who enjoys music while doing other things. They love music and listen to a lot of it, but the quality just has to be fun and good enough. 
as long as it gets your head bobbing, your feet moving, it works. Casual listeners are not concentrating and focusing on the music itself, but absorbing it to help them get through the day, through a bad breakup <laughs> or whatever. There's nothing wrong with appreciating music at the surface level. I mean, this was me 10 years ago. So audio files on the other hand are concentrated listeners. They are looking for something more immersive. There's a deeper engagement to what they're hearing and a high performance playback system helps them unlock a higher level of emotional involvement. This is where the goosebumps come in and you start to hear the how of the recordings. For example, the artistic techniques of the vocalists and musicians more throat, more chest, more strength. You can actually hear the amount of exertion and, and emotion that goes into someone who's belting out a note. Even your Spotify streams have this information, but not every headphone will be able to reproduce those nuances. It's also important to note this applies to all genres of music, live or studio recordings. I listen to a lot of hip hop, metal, and pop. It doesn't always have to be minimally mic'd acoustic recordings. Many audiophile recordings are jazz or classical, and that might not be your cup of tea, but those will actually give you a better idea of the naturalness of a performance, and they're unaltered for the most part, so you, you do get a better sense of air and space and texture. You know, at the end of the day, it's personal preference. Who you are depends on what you pay attention to. But keep in mind, you could probably EQ a resolving piece of gear to sound like a crappier one, but not the other way around. Duh. All right, so let's get to the sound. Although they both use the same seven millimeter dynamic drivers, they each sound very different. The one thing that remains the same is the neutral tone. It's not very warm blooded. Obviously you should use familiar music while testing gear. And for me, I actually like to use uh, Spotify Sessions. If you haven't heard the playlist already, they're really good rec acoustic recordings. And uh, too bad they're not lossless, but Spotify is gonna have a lossless service by the end of the year. And yeah, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I'm really excited for lossless on Spotify because these recordings are so great and you can't get them on Tidal. Okay, so speaking of Tidal, I do use them for the lossless files. I download them straight to my phone, so I kept these over the years. And uh, I'll have specific ones like Bass Test. And I mean, they're not all the best examples, but I do have multiple lists. I mean, we have the WAP by Cardi B, which I think stands for Win Any Prize. Uh, good for testing rumble and sub bass, it just kind of rattles your head a bit. And there's a few other ones, but I, I use multiple lists. So my impression of these, the original ones, the Gen 1s, it's a thicker, heavier sound. It's quite a bit boomier. It's more heavy handed and less meticulous. And as such, imaging and atmosphere is non-existent. Also, I think the sound is big, which most tech reviewers attribute to soundstage. What's the point of talking about soundstage when you can't even localize the performers on the soundstage? Uh, all, all of those things are a bit glued together on the Gen 1s. They're kind of a blob of sound. There's good weight on the bass, which is why I think most mainstream consumers would enjoy these more. But the bass artificially thickens most of the lower mids and muddies the sound up quite a bit. It's more dense and I guess more physical, which is understandably alluring for some. So the Gen 2 is more light-footed, uh, leaner, but more textural. So you can hear the individual strings from a bowing of a cello or a violin. You can also hear more texture from the vocals. It gives it that humanistic sound. Background's also much quieter, which helps with separation. You can hear each instrument and its natural harmonics much cleaner. There's not nearly as much heft on the bass, but it's tighter, more defined, and still very punchy. There's also more depth information, so you can hear how far one instrument is from another. For example, where the singer is standing relative to the guitarist or the drummer. I mean, this is audiophile stuff. So when you do a direct comparison between the two, the Gen 2 is a way cleaner sound versus a Gen 1. Enough talking, why don't you hear for yourself? Keep in mind, the sound demo isn't a representation of the actual quality, but illustrates some of the relative differences I spoke about. You won't need more than a few seconds to hear the differences. They're pretty dramatic. We light up when we ignite. When you leave, don't forget to remember, don't forget to remember me. We light up when we ignite, 
As you could probably hear, on the surface, the Gen 1 has a bolder sound, boomier bass. It's more forward, mellow, and richer, but not very transparent. There's not a lot of ambience. I presume the full-bodied and softer sound will attract more casual listeners, but will get old for a hi-fi enthusiast. The Gen 2 is more crisp, refined, airy, and just has more of that speed and vividness. Uh, this level of clarity allows you to hear your music at a deeper level. There's more brass in trumpets and sax, more bend and flex off kicks, snares, and toms. The sound stage is perceptibly more spacious, whereas for the Gen 1s, all of those elements are smeared in a bass bubble. Uh, that's not an audio file term, I just made that up, but that's how it sounds like. Also, one note about active noise cancelling mode, uh, you can actually see the difference here. This is a new feature for the Momentum 2s, you know, there's a little mic there. Although I think ANC smooths out the sound when the high-end tuning isn't enabled, you do lose depth and clarity if you do turn it on while you have the high-end tuning feature on. And it clouds out the sound a little bit and it's not as speedy, so just keep that in mind. I would just leave it off because the ANC isn't that great either, so you're not missing out on much. So now that you have a better idea of how these both sound, where does the Gen 2 stand? as far as the, the ranking goes. And I'm talking about in high-end sound mode compared to the other brands. So let's check it out on my computer here. You can see this list from audiobacon.net, go under best bits and it's under headphones. As you can see, uh, I ranked the original Momentum True Wireless pretty low and I'm sticking to that assessment because Savage. you're not really getting what you're paying for here. But let's talk about the Momentum True Wireless 2s. They move up the list quite quickly. Against the Bose Sound Sport Free, which I have here, so you can check it out. So the Gen 2s have more texture, clarity, speed, and transparency. It's also more tonally variant while the Bose is more consistently thick in a relatively bad way. So I think the Seni Momentum True Wireless 2 beats out the Bose. The Gen 2 is just better than most of these buds on the list. So let me just move all the way up to the Power Beats Pro. And I have that here. So I love these because I, I travel with them and it's kind of genre independent. They just sound pretty good. So the Power Beats Pro is like a much better and more expensive version of the Soundcore Liberty Neos. Uh, it's very rich, dark, and smooth. They're also cheaper and better than the original uh, Seni Momentum True Wireless. But with the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2s, they're much more resolving with sweeter highs. Hi-hats and cymbal crashes sound truer with these, uh, much more so than the Power Beats Pro. There's just more precision in timing out certain acoustic cues. Imaging and focus also much tighter. I do enjoy the darker tone of the Power Beats Pro, but I can't deny the technical performance of the Sennies. It has better tonal balance and is more vivid. There's more rhythm and dynamic punch to the sound. And the Power Beats Pros is like a little bit heavier and more relaxed sound. And it's great for like hip hop and maybe some R&B. The Momentum True Wireless 2s provide enough sonic variance to make it interesting. I'll have to give it to the Sennheiser. All right, so next on the list, we have the Master and Dynamic MW07 Go. They were very impressive earbuds that were obviously made for audio files, but it lacked shine and bass, and the overall sonic image is noticeably smaller. And this bud is still the best for hearing texture, although the Senni Gen 2s is still neutral. It has more fun on both sides of the spectrum while still being very articulate in the mids. The Seni gets the W here. Now for the current champ, the Liberty 2 Pros, as I've mentioned in my previous review, these have the best timbre I've heard from any earbud. And those tonal qualities rivals many speaker systems I've heard and for only $110. There are a few problems with it though. There is a hiss during playback, uh, which I didn't notice because once the music start, starts playing, it's loud enough for it not to be bothersome. The bigger problem with these is the coarseness and roughness in the upper mids and the lower treble. So F, S, H, T, -t sounds might be fatiguing over long sessions, but aside from that, this true wireless earbud checks all the boxes and their app gives you a ton of flexibility. 
So compared to the Liberty 2 Pros, the MTW2s have a thicker and dreamier sound. It's just more meatier, it's more fleshed out. The mid-range on the Momentum True Wireless 2s is much smoother and easier on the ears. It's a more neutral and colorless presentation, but the sound does have more gravity to it. But it lacks that warm glow. As far as everything else, the Liberty 2 Pro has better focus, separation, and more faithful contrasts of natural colors. Voices and instruments sound more like the real thing. It, it also carries a nice balance of energy and weight. It, it won't solidify the sound as good as the Sennheiser, but it does have more lower level details. Bass definition was also better uh, on the Liberty 2 Pros, although both are very punchy. To my ears, the Liberty 2 Pro still sounds more humanistic and convincing overall, mostly due to the tonal color. And for me, that's non-negotiable for the most part. For that reason, I'm actually keeping these at the number one spot. Now those who enjoy a denser sound and are extra sensitive to sharpness may still prefer the Sennheiser. They're neutrally tuned, fuller, and have more of that analog quality to them. And if you're tone deaf, variance in tone won't matter to you anyway. So the Sennies could actually be your number one. Once again, it's personal preference, but for me, the Liberty 2 Pros still remain the champ, especially at one third the price of the Sennheiser Momentum 2 Wireless 2s. All right, so although I prefer a warmer signature overall, the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2s has these hi-fi bits you'll hear from a high-performance stereo system, but in true wireless form. Transients are crispier and more tactile. There's better reproduction of ambience and air. And it's a technical achiever that enhances your connection to the music. And finally, with high-end sound tuning mode, it deserves to be called an audiophile grade true wireless earbud. Those who are familiar with Sennheiser's sound signature will be very pleased. Would I get this over the original? Hell yeah. To me, it's better in every way. But there is one potential problem that may be a deal breaker for some, and that's the lack of aptX low latency, which exists in the original. So if you're playing games, watching a lot of YouTube or music videos on Tidal, you notice a slight delay with the voice sync. Aptex low latency does have a lower bit rate, which technically means lower sound quality. So the Gen 2's target audience is probably those who want higher fidelity above all else. Anyway, as people get more eager to travel, including myself, I'll be moving on to finding the best sounding over-ear wireless headphones. If there's a headphone you'd like to see in that comparison, please let me know in the comments below. I'll probably buy them from Amazon, so if you'd like to support the channel, check out the affiliate links below. All of it goes back into making more in-depth videos like these. Make sure you share, comment, and like for the algorithm, and I'll fry up the next one.